Well, uh, without trying to go into a long story, chapter one was that in high school, I got interested in the local dance band. They were forming one, and there was no pianist available, so I was it. And I had played a little, picked a little popular music of the day after my regular practicing was done on piano. So I was attuned to the popular idiom to a certain extent. It wasn't forbidden in my home, like some musicians. And I guess you could say, like in the famous Uncle Tom's cabin, uh, I grew just like Topsy. It developed and I had the interest, but I never took a uh, lesson in pop music in my life. It was only by listening and observing and doing. We had a local theater in our, our town in Jersey outside New York, and it was a five-rank, two-manual Kimball organ. And, of course, with the advent of sound, the organ was disused, and I knew it was there. So I clamored one day at the manager's office and said, I want to practice organ. He said, come on, a kid can't play organ. I said, well, I play piano on the keyboard. I, I'd want to practice. He says, well, I'm from Missouri. You've got to show me you can play. So he went down. I guess the organ had been starved for the first time maybe in a year, a couple of years anyway. And I didn't know the, really the first thing about organ, but evidently I made enough sense out of the keyboards. And he said, hey, kid, you want to practice? Okay, if you'll start playing for the kids' shows on Saturday. So I guess you could say that was my start into theater, pipe organ, and organ generally. That was a very fortunate thing of being at the right time at the right place and sending the right letter to the right people. I had gotten out of the service after World War II and uh, wasn't sure entirely what I wanted to do. Yes, I had a church job waiting for me, which I had auditioned for before the war, and I wasn't sure how to fill in my time. I knew I was going back to Juilliard to get my degree, actually an orchestra for conducting. But I decided, gee, I just wanted to play organ and pop organ again. Uh, and I hadn't really played since my days before the war. I'd done a radio station job, a small radio station in New York. But I wanted to get back into pop organ, theater organ particularly. And I wrote a letter to, uh, at that time, well, Dick Liebert. And uh, I had been up to see his broadcast many times before, and he knew I was on earth anyway. So he arranged an audition, and I played for him, and that was the end of it. Within three days, I got a phone call that uh, they wanted me to come in and learn the big organ downstairs. Of course, the audition was on the upstairs studio organ, the three manual, Wurlitzer. So right after that, he said, you're going to be here as the associate organist, playing on my days off, the regular day, man's days off, and closing the theater every night. Well, to me, my God, I just was on cloud nine. And it gave me the chance, of course, in the evening, playing the house clothes and to stay on and learn that instrument. And so I was just very fortunate to have that opportunity to grow with a job, my first job as a theater organist in a theater.
first night that I played there uh, as the associate organist, I was instructed as to the music hall organ you see uh, has rolls out from the wall. It's not in an orchestra pit. And you have to open curtains first. There's a second set of button for rolling the console out. Now, when you're to begin the organ solo, you open the curtains and perhaps start to play and then start to roll out. Now, of course, in the excitement, I was here, I'm at Radio City Music Hall, a nervous youngster starting out. And uh, I hit the wrong button, and the house lights were coming up, and I started to play the full chords, and I suddenly I felt things on my face and all over. I had rolled the console out when the curtains were draped over the console, and I was fighting curtains coming out. And I thought, oh, this is the end for me. The manager is probably going to sack me right away. The same thing in reverse when I rolled in. I wasn't going to take a bow the first number. I didn't think I was good enough. Well, I hit the button with the console out and the curtains draped over the organ. Then I finally couldn't find the button. The house lights were down, but the spot was still on me. And I could feel the sunburn on the back of my neck from that <laughs> arc lamp up there. Well, what seemed like five minutes actually turned out to be about 20 seconds. And uh, everything worked out. But that's a little humor. Things do happen. <laughs>
I think that the uh, uh, current scene is producing a lot of new music, not all of it particularly the greatest, but I think that any of us who think the theater organ is purely a nostalgic instrument has ought to, or really ought to, revitalize or change their thinking. Uh, I consider the organ, for instance, like piano. You can play honky-tonk, you can play um, classical, play cocktail lounge. The theater organ is capable of playing music. I won't say the, the extremely uh, Baroque music. It can be played on it, but it's not the best instrument for it. But we can play orchestral transcriptions, classics, pops, jazz, yes, rock and disco. And the young artists coming up, if we're to encourage the medium to continue, we have to give them their chance and let them play their music. The spectrum is broad enough to encourage young artists and the current musical scene should include the theater organ.